From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to a special Cube Conversation. I'm coming from the Boston area studio. Uh, we were supposed to have a CubeCon Europe in Amsterdam. Uh, first in the spring, they push it off to the summer, and of course the decision uh, due to the global pandemic is it's making it virtual. Um, but happy to welcome to the program two guests that I was planning to have on in person, but couldn't wait for our virtual coverage for the event. So uh, happy to welcome the co-founders of Trigger Mesh. Uh, sitting in the middle is Mark Hinkle, uh, who is the CEO of the company, and uh, to, to the other side, Sebastian Goezgen, who is the, also the co-founder and the chief product officer. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us, too. Thanks, too. All right. So, you know, it's interesting. We've, we've been covering the, the cloud native space for a number of years, and especially at KubeCon, there's always some of those discussions of, you know, does cloud kill on premises? Does this new thing kill that old thing? And in some of the early days of KubeCon, it was like, well, you know, containers were really interesting, and there was, you know, all the buzz for years about Docker. Um, but, you know, hey, the, the next thing's going to be serverless. And serverless, we don't need to think about any of that stuff. It's the nirvana of what developers wanted. So therefore, let, let's not worry about containers. But you sit in that space uh, really helping to connect uh, between you know, some of the various pieces. So uh, I guess, Sebastian, maybe if I could start with you, because you've, you've built some of these various projects. Uh, you know, when you go through and look at your, your background, you know, you've been involved in the Kubernetes space, Kubeless, and now of course, Trigger Mesh. But, you know, give us some of that background as to how from a technological underpinnings, uh, the community has been thinking about how, how these worlds uh, fit together. Yeah, sure. And, it, you know, it's, it, it's very interesting because uh, first, you know, the, the, the container rejuvenation started with, with Docker, obviously, and then Kubernetes, you know, uh, appeared and the entire community started building this. And this was really an evolution from, you know, the virtual machine orchestration. Right, people needing a better way to package application, deploy them, and they said, you know, hey, you know what? Virtual machines are not, you know, that great for this. Can't we have a better vehicle to do this? And that's where, you know, really containers to to cover, and it made total sense. And so we saw this switch from, you know, craziness about OpenStack and even CloudStack that Mark and I uh, worked on, uh, and you know, putting all the focus on on containers. And then comes AWS, always innovating, always in the lead, and AWS saying, hey, you know what? Actually, we need to go serverless. We need to forget about the infrastructure. What people want is really you know, deploy applications without worrying about the infrastructure. Uh, they want things that are going to auto-scale. Uh, they want to pay very little, you know, even pay per function call, uh, and not pay you know, when your, uh, your VM is up. So AWS really pushed this uh, this mindset of uh, of serverless, but then what was the what was the meaning in that in that realm of of containers? And that's where I started Kubeless, and I said, you know what? If you would need to build function as a service, you should build it on Kubernetes. You can use Kubernetes as a platform. And from there, we started seeing this fight a little bit between people saying, hey, you know, forget containers, go serverless. So you know, at Trigger Mesh, we're not really taking that stance. We really see. Uh, on-premises has, you know, it's always going to be here. Uh, you know, we have workloads on-premises, we have our own data centers, but definitely there is more and more cloud usage. And when you start using the cloud, you don't want to care about the, uh, the infrastructure in the cloud, right? So you want as much serverless as possible in the cloud, but you know you have to deal with your, uh, your on-premises, you know, databases and some workloads and so on. So you have to be a pragmatic and you have to take the, uh, the best of both worlds. And uh, and keep moving to uh, you know modernize your uh, your uh, you know your uh, your stack and, uh, and your IT in general. Excellent. All right. So Mark, you know at, at the CNCF, uh, I, I had seen uh, the the Knative project come out, uh, and it was talking about you know how we can how can we can connect uh, containers and serverless. And one of the questions I'd been asking is, I said, well, you know, look, there are a lot of open source projects for serverless. But when I talk to the community, when I talk to users, you say serverless, I think AWS. Sebastian was just talking about. So, you know, I was sitting at the KubeCon shows and talking to the vendors and a lot of really big vendors working on Knative, you know, Oracle, IBM, Red Hat, uh, and others. And I said, if this doesn't connect with 
you know, AWS first and, you know, Azure second, you know, I, I don't understand what we're doing. Yes, there's probably a place for on-premises, but that was when, you know, I think you and I had a conversation. We've, we've been looking at this space. So how did the ideas that Sebastian talked about turn into, a, you know, an initiative and a company of Trigger Mesh? Well, early on, uh, we um, latched on to the Knative announcement that Google made. Um, Google had uh, given, given uh, Sebastian some insight into where they were going with serverless um, <clears throat> and the Knative project before it launched. And then they, they actually quoted him in their release, which started interest in our company, which was only a company in name at that point. Um, but uh, we really didn't know where Knative and Kubernetes together were going and the serverless movement, but we we thought at first that there would need to be management capabilities to uh, do lifecycle management around serverless functions. But what we realized, or Sebastian more realized early on, was that it's not so much the management of serverless, because that's the whole idea of serverless is to abstract away all the um, servers and architecture so that all you're really dealing with is the uh, runtime. And so the problem that we, we, first, we saw early on was not managing, but actually integrating applications across serverless fabric. So um, the name Trigger Mesh um, that came from the idea that you trigger serverless functions and that you would mesh um, architectures, whether they be legacy applications or they be uh, cloud services or other serverless um, clouds across across the fabric of the internet. So that's trigger mesh, and that's that's really where we we're going. And we we see that um, there's a couple of proof points in our industry for that already. Of people having a, a desire to do that. All right, excellent. So you know that that integration uh, that, that that you're talking about that um, you know help Sebastian. Uh, explain there's uh, some news, uh, I believe it's the EveryBridge cloud native integration platform uh, that, that's just announced. Help us understand you know, what that is and if you can give a little, you know, what, what should we be kind of comparing it uh, to other solutions in the industry today? Yeah, so you know we're very happy about the the, the EveryBridge uh, announcements, uh, and it's really you know we're getting uh, beta. We are doing a beta release of EveryBridge available in a, in our SaaS cloud, the Trigger Mesh at IO, and um, and really to to you know first piggyback on what Mark was saying is that I think a lot of people still believe serverless is just functions, right? And for us, serverless is much more than this. Serverless is about building event-driven applications. We see it with AWS, with things like they're doing with EventBridge, you know, for example. Uh, but we really believe in this mindset. You know, what we're trying to do is to help people build applications, build cloud-native applications that fundamentally are event-driven, uh, and they are linking cloud services in the public cloud providers and also on-premises workload, right? So, you know, every bridge allows people to to do this, to build those cloud-native apps as basic event flows that connect uh, event sources, wherever they are, could be uh, events that are on-prem from an e-commerce application, ERP application, could be events that are circulating through a Kafka infrastructure on-prem. And people can connect those event sources with what we call targets. So those targets could be on-premises, they would be OpenShift workloads, for example, or they could be in the cloud, AWS Lambda functions, Google Cloud Run, uh, or even you know, dedicated SaaS like Twilio, SunGrid, and so on. So that, that's what we saw really over the last you know, 18 to uh, almost two years now, is that serverless is more of an integration problem, you know, more like uh, traditional iPads that uh, you know, you, you, we've seen, right? So basically, we are, we're building a, a new iPad solution at the frontier of serverless uh, offerings from the public clouds. Uh, traditional messaging system like Kafka, RabbitMQ, and so on, plus the, uh, I would say, the old uh, iPaaS solution. And we're doing all of this backed by Kubernetes and Knative. Excellent, so uh, Mark, I, I heard Sebastian talking he, he, about, he mentioned OpenShift, talked about Google. 
Speak a little bit to really the ecosystems and marketplaces that uh, Trigger Mesh fits into. Um, you know, what are you know the, the use cases that you're seeing customers using? Yeah, I think a couple of the um, to dive into the the on-prem triggers. We'll we'll um, we have the capability to trigger for Oracle database changes that could actually um, kick off uh, cloud-based ETL transactions. Uh, we're, we're seeing that <clears throat> users are going through digital transformation and, and really to be more specific given the global climate right now is remote work. And the idea of lifting and shifting all of your infrastructure into the cloud is um, pretty daunting and long task. But if you can front end those, those systems with new cloud native architecture and you have a way to create those event, um, event flows to to tie into your existing systems to, you know, um, new portals for your employees to get their work done, um, automate workflows to provision new systems like <clears throat> Zoom, for example, and other conferencing systems. Uh, you can use, use the serverless front ends and um, workflows that actually integrate with all of your existing infrastructure. And, give you a, a way to extend your, your life of your applications and modernize them. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the long pole in the tendon modernization always is that application. Uh, you know, Sebastian, may, maybe it, it come to you on this is, you know, I, I think about iPads, uh, you know, when you look at that space, they talk about, you know, all the integration that they need to work on. Uh, usually, you know, there's certifications involved. You know, you mentioned Oracle databases, you know, these are things that, you know, we need to, you know, go in there with an engineering effort and make sure that, you know, it's tested and, you know, certified by uh, the ISV out there. Does, you know, containerization, Kubernetes and serverless, does this change it at all? Does it make it easier uh, to move along these environments? Uh, you know, I, I guess the, the question is for the enterprise, uh, you know, normally this change uh, is, is rather slow. Um, you know, Mark was just alluding to the fact, you know, we need to do some of these things a little faster to try to react from, you know, what, what's happening in the world. Yeah, I, I think that's the, the entire premise of, uh, of, of containers, right? That it's speeding up the, um, you know, the, the software lifecycle and, uh, and the, you know, the, the speed at which we can deliver new, new features for, you know, all our applications and so on. So, uh, a big part of the job when, when Docker started and then Kubernetes has been, if you adopt that type of uh, um, infrastructure and that, that type of uh, artifact, you know, containers, uh, you're going to speed up your, um, uh, your, your, software, your software management and software delivery. Um, so now what happens is that you have slow moving pieces, maybe pieces that you've, you've had in your, uh, in your data center for you know, 10, 20 years, you know, for quite a while. And then you have this extremely fast moving uh, environment, which is containerized and, uh, and running, running Kubernetes, uh, plus the cloud, right? That's, uh, that's even, you know, you could say even faster moving. Um, and you can, you know, that's, that's definitely the challenge and that's where we see the, the, the value and that's where we see the struggle is that you have all those big companies that have those slow moving pieces, Oracle DB, IBM MQ, you know, and so on. And they need to make those pieces relevant in a fast moving containerized world and in a, in a cloud native world, right? So how do you bridge that gap? So that's what we do. We provide bridges. We provide integration bridges with every bridge. There you go. You know, so we connect the event sources from Oracle DB and MQ, and we bring that to you know, a more fast moving uh, cloud native environment, whether it's you know, managed Kubernetes on Google GKE, or whether it's still on-prem in, uh, in OpenShift. Yeah, uh, Mark, uh, you know, want to get your viewpoint just you know, being a startup in today's you know, global environment. You know, obviously your company, you, know, you look at the cloud native space, many of the companies are distributed. You know, we're, we're, we're talking to Sebastian uh, you know, from over in Europe, uh, you're, you're down in North Carolina, but you know, give us your viewpoint as, as a startup. You know, how is the current economic environment impacting uh, you, impacting your partners, impacting your customers? So, um... Our partners and customers um, are probably moving slow, more slowly than we do as a startup because they had, you know, 
they had physical brick and mortar offices. And now they're coming into our world. We're hundred percent virtual. We're in three continents um, across, you know, over 12 time zones. So that, that kind of work versus where they're at, I think everybody is consciously moving ahead. The one thing that I will say is that their interest in being more like the startups that are virtual, don't have brick and mortar, um, are really good at online collaboration. They look at us for sort of inspiration on how they're gonna do business going forward, or at least for the, the, the foreseeable future. So um, overall, I think that, um, not only are we teaching them about cloud native technologies, but we're just teaching them about um, distributed workforces in a quarantine world. Absolutely, and I think those are you know some of the key learnings that you look at you know the diverse ecosystem uh, in the cloud native space. Want to give you uh, both a final word uh, and yeah. Stu, Stu, if I yeah. yeah, if I just if I just add something, I mean, you know, Mark and I have been I've been working from home for, you know, quite a while, 8 to 10 years, and 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 definitely right now this is not the normal working from home, right? We all have uh, yeah, most of us have kids at home 24/7. Uh the cognitive load in the news is huge. Uh this is not the normal uh environment. So you know, we are extremely, uh, extremely careful. We, we, we help each other definitely internally in the team, you know, India, Vietnam, uh, Germany, Spain, US. Uh, we, we have to be extremely careful that everybody is not, uh, you know, falling down and, and, and pulling too much on the, the nerves and, and their spirits, right? So, uh, yeah, not, not a normal environment. And even though we know how to do it, we have to be, we have to be careful. Yeah, no, Sebastian, I'm so glad you brought that up because, right, this, this is not just a, you know, hey, how do we move to a distributed system? Uh, there is the rest of the, you know, impact yeah. on that. All right, so, yeah, let let give you both final word. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we will, you know, we absolutely will be gathering, uh, you know, together, even if we are remote for the KubeCon event uh, for Europe, uh, other events later this year. But, um, you know, Sebastian, let, let, let's start with you, you know, final takeaways. Yeah, so you know, we're excited to 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 build a startup. It's uh, it's fast moving. It's uh, you know, it's an exciting industry, and uh, and, and really seeing the, the the beta release of every bridge for us. Uh, you know, we're we're trying to bring the the future of event driven application to everybody, uh, event sources to targets uh, for everyone, not just on AWS, and uh, and you know, taking all the strength of Kubernetes with us. Uh, it's going to be a, a familiar system for all Kubernetes lovers. Great, and Mark? Um, well, as, as we talked about today, we're very excited about the EveryBridge announcement. And if you're interested in cloud native, serverless, digital transformation, we think we have great tools for you. But on a more personal and global note, uh, I think uh, Sebastian hit something that's really important, that you know, even though we're not all together, um, it's, it's really important to check in. Even, even these virtual um, sessions have been, it's nice to uh, interact with your colleagues and your friends in the industry, but um, be kind to each other and uh, um, don't just take it for granted that on, everything's good on the other end of the, um, the wire. So reach out to each other and, and we'll all get through this together. Well, Mark and Sebastian, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, absolutely, you know, the, the personal pieces, as well as you know, trigger measure helping to pull some, pull some of those you know technology communities together. So uh, congratulations on the progress, and and definitely look forward to you know tracking where you go from here. Thanks, Thanks too. We appreciate it. All right, be sure to check out thecube.net. We will be covering uh, KubeCon and Cloud Native Con Europe as it goes virtual, as well as lots of others in the cloud developer space. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching the Cube. Mm -hmm.